So let's finish up today with neuroinflammation. So inflammation. Oh, and I took my oldest son's markers so and messed them up, of course, so he's going to be not too happy when he comes home from school because they're all out of order. So inflammation. So really everything, a lot of these pathways that we've talked about can produce an inflammatory response. So let's start to draw this out. So we have a neuron. Get a bit more detailed of a neuron, not really. So a neuron, it's axon, and projection out, right? So you have, let's just draw our components. We have our nucleus, right, with double stranded DNA, we have our mitochondria. Oh, these markers are beautiful. Too bad I'm not going to redo all the other lectures. Endoplasmic reticulum. Right, so I'm going to try to keep all these, you know, colors consistent as we go through if I ever have to do a drawing again. Okay, so we have our main components, right? The endoplasmic reticulum buffering calcium. So in my world, it's these high, this is kind of a review, I guess, video as well, high intracellular levels of calcium. Oh my goodness, that is small. Zoom in a little bit. So we'll just focus on this little part of the world. Inflammation, high levels of intracellular calcium that lead to mitochondria activation of ATP. ATP, right? That ATP can set off, ooh, sorry, reactive oxygen species. So now we're not, don't have a lot of space here. So reactive oxygen species, that can lead to, we'll draw it over, we'll put it over here, one step lysis. It's nice and big so you can see that. The reactive oxygen species can also lead to, or sorry, the activation of mitochondria can also lead to cytochrome C, and that leads to apoptosis, apoptosis. All right, so we have excitotoxicity, apoptotic signals, lysis, reactive oxygen species. We have misfolded proteins, so this would be a cell that's really messed up. So we have misfolded proteins, maybe because of all that calcium coming in. You have hyperphosphorylation, all these phosphorylations on this protein causing it to aggregate. So this, in fact, is what happens in Alzheimer's disease. It's called the tau protein, and it's a hyperphosphorylated tau. Ooh. Sorry. There we go. Hyperphosphorylated tau protein within the cell produced by aggregation of that protein. So what's happening now? So we have misfolded proteins, excitotoxicity, reactive oxygen species, apoptosis, lysis, all these things are now sending out signals, distress signals, let's say. So I'm going to do it over here because we're going outside of the cell. Distress signals to activate our resident microglia, our resting microglia. So that's this guy here. So this is a microglia resting, waiting. So it is activated by different, I guess, basically distress signals. Okay, so there are these neurons that are going under lysis, that are going aggregated proteins, are sending out distress signals to say, I'm in trouble, I'm dying, get going, microglia. So the microglia now have a responsibility to essentially destroy that neurons so that it doesn't cause other toxic effects. So that's all good and well. But as that microglia becomes activated to help eliminate that neuron, what it starts to do is spit off its own, uh, it, what are called cytokines. So can I draw it right here? Cytokines. And those are anti-inflammatory or pro-inflammatory signals. So what, they are, what those signals do is they are meant to, they're released by the microglia and they can activate other, they can basically activate microglia. 
So resting microglia can release cytokines to awaken other microglia. Which is good because you want to make sure that you can deal with that dying neuron. But those cytokines can also be toxic. So this is the problem. So again, in small levels, those cytokines are good, but in high levels, I'm gonna come back over here to draw it here. Cytokines, increased concentration of cytokines, and really outside the cell can be toxic. So what are we talking about? We're talking about the IN, oops, sorry. IL1 through, I think there's 12 now. There's a bunch of cytokines. There's TNF alpha, uh, the IL6, IL1, sort of like that. So there's lots of different cytokines that can be released by microglia to act to wake up the other resting microglia to help, you know, isolate that neuron and get rid of it. You know, maybe because through the apoptotic signals, it'll go around phagocytose it, and then it will chew it up. But those cytokines, unfortunately, if they are at high, high levels, th those they can actually destroy other neurons. So the pathway is now, let's kind of move it over here. This gets to be a bit more involved. But that pathway can now, those, those can be cytotoxic. Cytokines, cytotoxic. And that will destroy, I'll just put X's, for destroying other neurons. So those soluble factors can float around the brain, wiping out other cells. So at high sustained levels or uncontrolled release of these neuroinflammatory cytokines, other neurons will die. So typically in the normal brain, you don't have all these other processes going. You don't have high levels of calcium. Sometimes you do after you drink alcohol. And that can lead to an a, a inflammatory process, but it will be controlled by the anti-inflammatory signals, which will sort of keep all this in check. You have pro-inflammatory, which will destroy that cell, but then the anti-inflammatory will re, you know, reduce that activation. But if you have sustained high levels of calcium, you have sustained activity in the endoplasmic reticulum, you have sustained mitochondrial dysfunction, you have constant lysis of cells, you have constant apoptotic signals, you have constant aggregation of proteins, so you are in a diseased state. The inflammatory process is going to keep going, you're going to have uncontrolled, sustained inflammatory activation, and this will lead to uncontrolled, let's say, uh, toxic agents contributing loss of other neurons surrounding that area. So it can start to spread, which is what you see in a lot of disease processes the neurodegenerative diseases are called neurodegenerative because the process spreads around. That, neuro, that cell death continues throughout the brain. There's other problems that happen with this. You have, you, know, you have the brain inflammatory process and the body immune response. And the, when the body immune response gets in here, it's a whole other world. So that often is where MS comes into play in this whole process. We're not going to get into those details, but we'll cover those as we go along. But for now, just keep in mind that when you have a diseased neuron as such, when you have all these different factors that are you know, going out of control, causing the sustained activity in microglia, causing the sustained release of cytokines, TNF-alpha, let's say, that will cause this, these cytotoxic factors to go around and kill other neurons. So it's a real problem.